This is a J Mix exclusive. Mm -hmm. Hello all, it's JMix here. In light of recent postings by other channels and camps of fake documents and altered pictures, I've decided to put out this little piece of history to give the fans out there a real exclusive. This is the original incident report on Yafu Fula, aka Yaki Gaddafi, of Tupac's group The Outlaws, and his shooting death in New Jersey dated 11-10-1996. It is the official written account of the first responding officer on the scene that fateful night. This never seen before document has been buried for over 20 years in the depths of Tupac's case files and in the spirit of the quest for truth and freedom of not only sharing but access to information. I present to you the original Orange Police Department incident report of Yafu Fula's shooting death. The quality of this document is that of a fax from one police department to another police department. So I went ahead and transcribed it for the viewers using the exact vernacular and spellings of the responding officer. To protect the privacy of the witnesses, and out of respect for the family of Yafu Fula, I have decided to redact the female witnesses' names and exact addresses, instead using the terms female number one and female number two. This document release has been made possible by my Patreon donors and by the people who brought you Tupac Assassination, Battle for Compton. It's available now on Amazon Prime for free, Google Play, and YouTube On Demand. So without any further ado, here is the exclusive, never before seen, incident report of the shooting death of Yafu Fula. Yafu Fula, date of birth, October 9th, 1977. Aggravated assault with a firearm. Time reported 3.48 a.m. The date is November 10th, 1996. How the victim attacked was shot. The type of premises was hallway. Object of attack is an unknown firearm. Means of attack is unknown. On the above date and time, I responded to Mechanic Street on the third floor where it was reported that a young black male had been shot in the head. I entered the third floor hallway and observed a young black male laying on his back on the floor with blood on the right side of his face. Holding his left hand was a young black girl, later known as female number one and female number two. I also observed a green in color pipe approximately two feet from the victim's foot. I then asked female number one and female number two to enter the apartment in order to conserve the crime scene. Female number two then entered apartment 310. At this time, Officer B. Troop, Officer A. Smith, and Lieutenant T. Smith arrived on the scene. I then entered apartment 310 and spoke to female number two and her daughter, female number one. Female number one then told me that the victim was a Mr. Yafu Fula, which was female number one's boyfriend, and that he had been visiting from California and had missed a flight earlier today going to Georgia. Female number two 
then stated approximately 8 to 10 minutes before the incident occurred. She heard someone knock on her door. Upon answering the door, she was confronted by two black males, one of them being approximately 5 foot 5 inches in height, slim build, light skinned, brown eyes, wearing a green jacket with dark pants, with a shaved haircut and a solid black or dark blue baseball cap. The other suspect was approximately 5 foot 2 inches in height, slim build, brown eyes, brown hair, dark skinned, wearing a black shirt, blue jeans, and a green and blue jacket. Both suspects appeared to be 18 to 20 years of age. Female number two said that the unknown actors asked to speak to the victim. The victim then answered the door and greeted the actors as if they were friends. A few minutes later, female number one and female number two state that they heard a gunshot and when they looked out the door, they saw the victim on the floor and both actors had fled. Female number two then notified us. Female number one stated that Mr. Fula had been wearing a bulletproof vest because Mr. Fula was the belated rap singer Tupac's brother and that he had had a lot of problems with the people in the area because of it. I then asked female number one and female number two to stay in the apartment and that Mr. Fula would be transported to UND Hospital. I then exited the apartment and observed EMS treating the victim. All the victim's clothing and a white color bulletproof vest were placed to the side by EMS. Lieutenant T. Smith then told me to follow EMS units to UMD Hospital, located at 150 Bergen Street in Newark, New Jersey, for treatment. Upon our arrival, we were met by a Dr. David H. Livingston. I observed Dr. Livingston treating the victim and observed him pull out one glass vial with a tan-colored top containing a white substance. I then assisted the nurses with the patient's clothing and found $61.30 in U.S. currency, some personal papers, and a small Ziploc bag of green vegetation of alleged marijuana. The victim's clothing and personal valuables were in my possession until the arrival of Detective J. Anderson. Dr. Livingston stated that the victim sustained a bullet wound to the upper right side of the right eye. Dr. Livingston also stated that the bullet remained in the victim's head and he was going to be placed in an intensive care unit with a life support apparatus. This has been officially marked as Orange PD Incident Report 96-29-039 Its date was November 10th, 1996. My only sincere hope is that possibly by releasing this document we can come one step closer to solving the numerous murders surrounding those who were with Tupac, supported Tupac, and died in mysterious ways while at Death Row Records. From Johnny J to Frank Alexander to Michael Moore to Russell Poole, these murders seem to be more than just one big coincidence. I want to give a big thank you to everybody who watched the video, and if you would like more information on the unsolved murder of Tupac Shakur, be sure to check out Tupac Assassination Battle for Compton. It's available for free if you have 
Amazon Prime. And you can also find it on Google Play, as well as even on YouTube to rent. It's well worth the watch, and it shows you the broader picture that goes way beyond just a gang beef. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see everybody on the next upload. One love, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>